the JAK inhibitor class of therapies has been around for over a decade now. What new therapies are showing promise when being studied in combination with these therapies? So the, I think the ones that are really exciting, um, and there are, there are a number, we don't know which one is the best, but I'll tell you the ones that I think really have potential would be drugs like Palabrasib, the pan bet inhibitor in the Manifest 2 study. Uh, even a drug called Naviticlax that isn't going to move forward taught us a lot. We, we, we know that pathway is important. We just have to improve upon how we're doing this. Drugs like Salinexor, the XPO1 inhibitor, is ongoing in the Sentry study. A drug called Nabtamadolin is a very active drug, um, and that's been shown as a single agent after ruxolitinib failure, but now is going after those patients who are not having an optimal response with ruxolitinib, adding it on on the back end. So I, what I really love about the way we're doing this is I think it's a very thoughtful approach trying to use these really active drugs that exploit non-redundant pathways in the disease, um, both either up front to really get the biggest bang for your buck, to really try to reduce the disease burden earlier on, or to try to add on as a strategy if patients aren't enjoying the maximum benefit from ruxolitinib. So we're really trying to tackle it from, from different angles. And, and some of these drugs really look promising. Yeah, yeah. Are there other single agent therapies that are being studied for myelofibrosis? There are. So I'll name two that I also think really deserve some attention. One is called TP3654. Um, and it's a drug by Sumitomo that's a PIM1 kinase inhibitor. So this also goes after a very specific um, pathway, inflammatory pathway and signaling pathway that is known to be uh, an important driver of disease and has very nice data, particularly from a symptom burden perspective, but also, again, this concept of disease modulation and reduction in cytokines in patients who've previously been on ruxolitinib. So there's data there, they're going to add it on to ruxolitinib. That really looks like an interesting approach forward. And then the drug I think many of us are very anxious to see results in which is ongoing, is the IMPACT MF study. This is the randomized phase three study of a metal stat, which is a telomerase inhibitor, an infusional agent that goes after a very important enzyme that keeps malignant cells alive um, and really is you know, one of the drugs that I think has the, the, the true potential to um, go after the stem cell, the, the, the origin of the disease and improve survival. It's the only study we have, we have had and currently have where the endpoint for the for the registration phase three study is a, is survival. It's patients who have failed ruxolitinib and are getting this drug as a single agent versus best available therapy. And it's a very exciting trial and a really important, whether you're on the trial or you're a candidate for it, it really helps us move the field forward because it gives us an essential insights into the disease and how to do better. When it comes to the latest research and treatment, what questions should patients ask their healthcare team about new or developing treatment options? Well, you know, I think every patient is different. Uh, I am truly different in the sense like their disease present, their biology is different, the way they present is different, their course is different. So really the the, the treatment options, including the, the um, trial options really need to be tailored to their patient. It has to make sense for that patient. It has to meet their expectations be aligned with their goals of therapy um, and, 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 and balance, balance risk with potential benefit. Um, patients have to understand and physicians have to present very clearly that some trials are randomized studies and you could get a placebo and it's often blinded. So the patient doesn't know, the physician doesn't know. Um, but importantly, in some of these studies, there's crossover. So even if you don't get the drug up front, you can get it in the back end. All of these things really have to be disclosed very carefully and thoughtfully so the patient's really making an informed decision that makes sense for them and is meeting their expectations. Mm -hmm.